Well, aloha, friends, and happy Thanksgiving. This is Syracuse Basketball Post Game presented by Krause Health. Brent Axe here in Syracuse, New York. Donna DeToda. If you're watching on YouTube, as you can see with that spectacular hat, still in Hawaii. I got to wear it, man. I got to wear it. You have to. I am so glad you wore that hat. It is spectacular. And it was a spectacular day. It was a a walk on the beach for the Orange in their final appearance in the Maui Invitational after getting beat by two top 11 teams. They said, hey, why don't we play Chaminade and win 105-56? to So Don and I are going to go over a bunch from that game, and we're going to hear from our texters, our Syracuse Sports Insiders here shortly. Don't forget to text ORANGE to 315-847-3895 to become a Syracuse Sports Insider. So, Donna, the ORANGE were thankful to play a Division II team at the end of this run for sure. Uh, It kind of felt like one of those exhibition games at the Dome before the season started, and uh, they needed it. They needed to leave Maui with a win, and, and that's what we saw on Wednesday night. Yeah, um, you know, the best thing that came out of this is that they started to shoot the ball pretty well in the second half. They made some threes in the second half, and that has been something that they have not really done all that well. Although I've been perusing the box scores, uh, and not a whole lot of teams are shooting threes that well here. I'm not sure if it's the rim. I don't know what the deal is, but uh, the depth perception here, I'm not sure. I don't think anybody's actually practiced in that gym. Um, so it's, it, that was one of the better things to see come out of this game that they could make some threes. 23 assists for Syracuse. We said it on yesterday's show. You get more assists when you make shots and Syracuse yeah. certainly had some high percentage shots in this one. And they just, Donna, they just looked locked in. They looked like let's run an offense. Let's pass the ball. Let's take right. advantage of this team that's out there. They could have gone through the motions in this one, but maybe they got a message from coach, uh, coach Autry. I don't know if he said anything about that in post game to just go out on a high note. And speaking of a high note, Naheem McLeod big in this one today. And, you know, he had about seven, eight inches on pretty much anybody on the courts. So you would expect this in a way, Donna, but, what I like to see, and now can they incorporate that against better teams, is that lob pass, getting him near the basket and just taking advantage of that size that he's got underneath. Yeah, I talked to Naheem about it, and I talked to Judah about it. And Judah said, you know, it's a lot harder against teams that are bigger and better than it is against a team that's small like this. So, I mean, they wanted to go inside today because they obviously had a clear height advantage. But Adrian said, too, after the game today that that one of the things that he wanted to emphasize for this game was sharing the ball a little bit better, you know, getting the, getting some easier shots, um, making the second or third pass so that, you know, the defense is kind of out of position a little bit and you get an easier shot than, than what they've been getting since they've been here. So I think all those things were important for Syracuse today um, you know you know just the offense I think looked a lot better guys were were looking for other guys 52 18 at halftime seven players in double figures Chris Bell led the way with 18 points and he's done that a, a couple of times this year Donna when Chris is on he's got that shot flowing you can look up he can have four or five three-pointers I think we know that is what he can bring to the table offensively I guess it's the other parts of his game that we'll continue to see round out here. But when he's on, he's on and feed him. And, you know, everybody got in the pool today, so to say, with seven guys and double figures in this game. But this isn't the first time he's, he's led this team in scoring, and it feels like it's not going to be the last either. You know, the beauty about, about Chris Bell is Chris Bell doesn't care if he misses shots. He's going to keep taking them. And that's how you have to be as a shooter. You have to have that kind of shooter's mentality. He did not make many shots yesterday. And he made a ton of shots today, or I mean, a lot more shots today than he had uh, in, in in yesterday's game. Um, and, you know, and they need him. They need him. They need Justin Taylor to be able to make threes. And Justin Taylor, um, you know, after being sort of over Honolulu and through five get five halves of basketball, made three for three or five in the second second half today. And that again is hugely important for his confidence. Number one. And uh, just to provide another guy on the perimeter that defenders have to pay attention to. I don't root for players. We're not allowed to root for players, Donna, but I was rooting for Justin Taylor. You can't leave Hawaii without points, right? So he got the 14 points, 10 rebounds, got that shot going again in this one. And look, you you don't want to see Justin with two scoreless games against good teams. You want to see how that rounds out, Uh, starting with LSU on Tuesday, though. LSU, they've... They've had an interesting run, Donna. They lost to Nichols this yeah. year by two. They lost to, um, what was it, Dayton, 70-67, and Dayton came back from down 15 points in that game. So uh, yeah. it seems like a team that Syracuse could certainly beat on yeah, I mean, Tuesday. 
Dayton is a team that's supposed to be do some damage in the A-10. So Dayton's pretty good. Um, so, uh, but, you know, it's so hard to make any kind of predictions about sort of middle of the pack teams, yeah. um, middle of the road teams this far in the season, because everybody's still trying to figure out their identities. Everybody's still trying to figure out their go-to guy, who's going to, how they're going to play defense, how they're going to rebound, who's going to rebound. So I think a lot of it right now is just sort of a um, works in progress for almost all of these teams, even the good teams that are here in Maui or here yeah, in Lulu at the Maui. Tournament. Even when they play LSU on Tuesday, think of the teams Syracuse has already mixed up against. The Colgate, a team that had beat him two years in a row. Patriot League champion, good team. A couple of teams you should beat early in the season. Two top 11 teams in the country who easily could make the Final Four, one if not both. And then Chaminade, a Division II team that, uh, God bless him out there. Bill Walton well, called it the most important seventh place game he's ever watched out there tonight, Donna. God bless uh, Bill. Yeah, Bill. Bill is uh, looms large here in Hawaii for for many many reasons. He sure um, does. You know, I think the most important game for Syracuse was the Tennessee game because that team plays really really tough, really physical defense. So I think it gave the guards and it gave everybody, generally speaking, a, a, a way to sort of gauge how they're going to play against that kind of physical brand of basketball. And they're going to see that down the road. They're going to see that in in ACC games. They're going to see that in in games where there's there's a lot of very tough physical teams that they will face. And I think that's was an important game for them. Don, I want to get your big takeaways from Maui and a couple other things to discuss here, but a couple minutes here for our Syracuse sports insiders. And don't forget to text the word orange to three, one, five, eight, four, seven, three, eight, nine, five. It's a two week free trial. It's just three ninety nine a month. After that, all the black Friday sales that are going to be going on and people starting their Christmas shopping, on Friday after Thanksgiving, uh, what a gift to, to give there. Just text ORANGE to 315-847-3895. You get to text me. I get to text you. You get my thoughts first. You get insider access. All kinds of great stuff as a Syracuse Sports Insider. Kling Ryan F., who texted in to say, I think perspective needs to be kept in this one with where this team was in the bracket. One and two in Maui was the most likely outcome and doesn't alter the goals that can be accomplished this season. It's a young team with a new coach, got a real test showing the gap between them and those currently near the top of the sport at this point. They know where they need to improve and have plenty of chances coming up to show growth in those areas while building a tournament resume. Al says, got to love the effort tonight. Team finally responding to red from the opening tip. Chris Bell's going to have multiple 20-point games this year. I think Taylor's going to have trouble getting on the court when Chance Westry returns. I don't know about that, Donna, because we don't know when Chance Westry yeah, is going to no return at this point. Return. Yeah, I don't think it's anytime soon. So, and as that's, as that's we talked about with Justin Taylor, you know, you want to see that guy continue to develop here. We have we have no timetable on Chance at this point. So we don't. But Justin's I don't your guy. Somebody asked me if I if he was coming going to come back before Christmas, and I do not think that's going to happen. Michael L texted in to say it's all about confidence. And he's talking about Chris Bell here. He knows how to shoot the three. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go six of eight, seven of nine, one game this season, hopefully against Duke. I like that. And Mike V says, I just hope that Benny ends up okay in the long run for him and the team and the coaches. College is for learning and hope he gets the support and structure he needs. Uh, Benny was back tonight after missing the Gonzaga game. And uh, I don't know if uh, did Coach Autry have an update on that at all, Donna? In no, post nobody, game nobody or? asked him about it. I mean, he played, so clearly, you know, things are back to normal. I would think. Right. You know, if he didn't play, then we would have had plenty of questions to ask. But he played, and you know, he played fairly well when he was in there. I thought six points, three of seven on the night, zero of three, hit a, a technical foul in the second half. I mean, Donna, you were right there, and what we saw on the replays on TV, I have no idea what yeah, that I, was I, for. I, I I don't know what happened like like i said i was probably about 20 feet from the the basket at that point and i i i don't have a clue about why it was called for a technical although somebody told me afterwards that it was for taunting and yes. um i so i did not I, I don't know i didn't see it i don't i don't know what happened i i rewound it about four or five times i didn't see it i, I have no idea how that even came close to taunting. I don't know if the refs just got bored because it was such a walk in the, on the beach for the Orange in this game. I, I was looking for something, maybe said something, but that wasn't even by letter of the of the law, if you will. I don't know what law the ref was citing there, so that was kind of an odd moment. But, yeah, yeah. Benny was back out there, and 
that's that's just what we've seen so far. You know, Benny took a personal day last year. Remember, of course, what happened earlier this year with the violation of team rules, which we aren't clear, at least uh, Coach Autry hasn't said publicly what that is. Just misses a game in the middle of Hawaii here. So getting back on track, playing in this game, maybe a sign it was just a, a temporary blip on the radar once again. But he's an important uh, factor on this team, obviously. And, and Donna, it's I, I, I hear this. And it, it's got to register with me, knowing it's such a young team. He's the veteran guy. He's yeah. he's the the junior leading the way for a lot of, of freshmen and sophomores on the squad. Yeah, I mean, let's hope everything works out with Benny. You know, I like Benny. He's a nice nice young man, and uh, I hope that um, you know we are uh, <laughs> incident free the rest yes. of the season. All right, Donna, what are your big takeaways from three days in Maui for the Orange here? They saw two top 11 teams. They saw Chaminade and uh, a partridge in a pear tree. So many things going on here, although that's a Christmas reference, not a Thanksgiving reference. But uh, anyway. Okay. There's, well, there's a lot of Christmas decorations up here. So, you know, yeah, you're, it's pretty much Christmas. People just sk- it's, it's they just skip over it anyway. So we, yeah, we can do Christmas that. From, think, uh, from Halloween on. Basically. That's right. What, so what are my takeaways? I think it's really important that Syracuse played two very good teams. Um, and like I said before, I think it's extremely important that they played a really, really good defensive team in Tennessee um, because that's how you can gauge a little bit um, how you can, how you're going to be able to score against teams that play that kind of style, that kind of physical brand of trying to bump you off the ball and all that. Um, other takeaways, uh, you know, I, I, this team still has a lot of a lot of work to do, and I think Adrian has has said that they've had a lot of work to do. Um, they can do a much better job defending, much better job on the ball defending, in particular. Um, I think that they, I think that they probably have learned that you have to play full out the entire time that mm-hmm. you're in the game. Um, because there have been spurts when they've been very good defensively, like very good. They've turned teams over. Um, they've gotten their fast break going. They've been very good defensively at times. And at other times, they have not been very good. Um, uh, from an offensive perspective, I think they're still a little bit far behind. But, like, none of these teams are killing it here on offense. Um, it, it, none of the, even the really good teams are killing it on offense. I think most of these teams are still a little bit far behind on where they are offensively. And, I mean, they're playing four out. And uh, one of the interesting things that happened today was that we mentioned earlier was that they're finally starting to lob the ball inside to Naheem. Um, and I think that's important. They have to establish something inside, I think, uh, going forward. And he's the, clearly the guy. I mean, he's seven foot four, and why not throw it up there and see if he can finish it? Um, so I think that's an important thing that happened uh, today. And I just think, you know, exposing these players to what it takes to be a really good team. You know, to to see how a team like Gonzaga or a team like Tennessee, veteranish type of teams, especially Tennessee, how they play down the stretch, the kind of poise they have down the stretch of games, how they don't let their emotions get hold of them as the games are progressing, and particularly in crunch times of games. And that's what experienced teams and older teams do. They know how to play when it, it's important in the games. And I think that's an important lesson to learn for this this young team. I think that's well said. I think there's just so much this team's got to put in the bank, right? Colgate game, second half. They know if they really go all out on defense, they can do that and shut down a good team. I mean, that was an extreme example based on it's yeah. like the biggest comeback in Syracuse history. Right. But they know when they turn on that press, if needed, they can do it. Seeing how Tennessee and Gonzaga run an offense, knowing what it's going to take to rebound. I th- That's one of my big takeaways. Like That's something that these coaches – can tell them time and time again about right. what rebounding is and its effort and it's all these things. But you got to see it against a Tennessee and a Gonzaga to know, okay, we really got to go after it here. What the forwards are going to have to contribute offensively against good teams. There's, that, there's only so much that Judah and JJ can do. And I thought JJ, again, take the opponent into consideration, yeah. but I think you wrote it very well done and just what you can see from jj and the flu- how fluid he is when he can step to the point and run an offense like yeah. when he gets going man when we see that snap into place and he'll be the first to tell you this jj has said this in a couple of post game sessions a lot he's like wait till we get going here right wait and he just he sees it coming and i just yeah. when that moment happens it's it's going to be something there so i do what? think that's the big takeaway 
play good teams, measure yourself against the best, but they got to win, and they showed what can happen when, regardless of the opponent, when you move the ball and you put yeah. your foot on the gas, like this team can't do some things. And lob the ball to Naheem when it works out and see if they can do that against better competition, right? Yeah, and, and I mean, I think the rebounding is huge. That's going to be a major, major issue going forward. I mean, they turn teams over, so that will help mitigate a little bit of their issues on the backboards, but they still have to rebound the ball. And I think that a lot of this film, a lot of this tape that they're going to be able to watch from those two performances against those those very good opponents um, is going to show them what kind of effort. And it, it's rebounding. Everybody says rebounding is all effort. It's not all effort. Part of it is you have to think about where you should be when the ball goes up. And I think a lot of that can be determined. Like if you watch film, if you see like, here's where this guy was when the ball went up or here's where, how this guy got into position once the ball went up. You have to kind of know where your teammates are shooting from, where the ball's going to come off the backboard. Part of that is just preparation before the ball even before the ball gets to the rim. And I think maybe once they've watched that a few times um, and seen how they have not been particularly good at it, um, you know, maybe it'll help some, sort of visually um, down the road. Well, Donna, thank you so much for all your coverage in Hawaii and for joining us on Syracuse Basketball Post Game presented by Krause Health the past couple of nights. Safe travels back. Hope you have a happy Thanksgiving in Hawaii. And we can't wait to see you back here in Syracuse. And we'll be right back at it Tuesday when the Orange take on LSU. All right. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And thanks to our Syracuse Sports Insiders. Remember, text ORANGE to 315-847-3895 to become a Syracuse Sports Insider. And uh, we will uh, leave everybody with this uh, terrific photo that uh, Donna DeToda and her terrific cat took in Hawaii. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. We'll catch you next time.